Podkinsers. Welcome to episode three of the official Webkins podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Janelle Webkins, and here with me is my friend and co-host, Mike Webkins. Hi, everyone. Hey, Janelle. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. That's it's still good. freezing outside. That's so cold. For all of our listeners <laughs> who didn't know this, our headquarters is in Toronto. Yeah. It's blustery yep. outside. So just, we're trying to stay warm. Anyways, before we continue, we just want to update you on something. A few of you have been asking if the Podkins would be available to listen to on mobile devices like iPhones and iPads. And we just want to let you know that we're looking into it and hopefully we'll have it ready for you soon. That's right. We'll keep you updated. As for today, we're super excited to be talking about Valentine's Day and all that comes with it. That's why our theme this episode is Best Friends. We've got a lot of comments and letters from you about Best Friends. So we'll be reading some of them today, like in our next segment, What's in Our Kins Post? Our first letter this week is from Sarah, who emailed us to say, Hi, my name is Sarah. I've been playing Webkins since I was six, and I'm 12 now. My very first Webkins was a little golden retriever, and I named it Cookie. My best friend is named Emma, and we play Webkins together all the time. We live an hour away from each other, but that doesn't keep us from being together. Well, that's yes, nice. That's <laughs> <laughs> we have playdates whenever we can and do video chat with each other almost every day. Every time we have to hang up, we have a signature. It is peace. And we do the peace sign. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. (laughs) Don't you think the peace sign looks like scissors? Kind of, yes. (laughs) We have friendship bracelets. And guess what the charms look like? Gummy bears. (laughs) That's amazing. See ya. We'll actually listen to ya in the next Podkins episode. Thanks, Sarah. I like that. Peace sign. Do it on video chat when you're playing with your friend. Just peace. Peace out. I like it. I love it too. Our next letter is from Katie who writes, I'm 13 and I have a BFF named Lori who plays Webkins too. Whenever we go to each other's houses, we play Webkins for about five hours. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a long time. (laughs) On snow days, we get on and play Webkins together while we email each other. I like to show her all the new Webkins tricks I learn. I also want to say how much I enjoy Webkins, though you probably guess since I can play for five hours. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. I I love the idea of playing Webkins while you're chatting with your best friend over email or chat or something like that. Yeah, it makes, makes the experience a lot better, that's for sure. Definitely. We also asked on Webkins News how our listeners met their best friends, and here's what a few of them had to say. Momo4Cookie says, I met my best friend Kate in second grade when we were packing up to go home after our first day of second grade. But then she moved towards the end of the school year, and we kept in touch by playing Webkins. Although now she doesn't play Webkins anymore, and that makes me sad. (laughs) That makes me sad, too. Maybe she'll come back. Who knows? Uh, The next one's from Snowflake Pup Queen. She says, Mine was back in kindergarten. That's actually how I got into Webkins. She taught me about Webkins and also American Girl dolls. Very cool. Our next one's from Sugalicious, who says, Loved every minute of both episodes of Podkins. My best friend now, I met on Webkins' Facebook page in 2009. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a long time ago now. Yeah. Her and I share everything, and I do mean everything, including our love of Webkins. She sent me a spooky pup for my birthday one year. I bought her an Easter Rockers Coyote for hers. We even have our own little secret group where we chat every day on Facebook about everything. I could go on and on and on about my best friend. I like that. Yeah. And now to round off our kin's post, we have a cute letter from Sophie who writes, Hey, uh, my name is Sophie and I'm 12 years old. The first kin's I got was a chihuahua named Poncho. My favorite webkins that I own has to be Candy, a rocker's cat, and Poppy, a rocker's papillon. I think webkins should make a little kin's bali tiger. My guinea pig, Pookie, looks practically identical to Cookies and Cream guinea pig. I also think you should make a Tinker guinea pig, a monarch butterfly, and a plaid puppy. I love podkins. P.S. Pookie says hi. Hi, Pookie. Hi, Pookie. Now, Sophie sent us the most adorable picture of her guinea pig, Pookie, and we've posted it in the article below so you can see how exactly it looks like the (laughs) cookies and cream guinea pig. Definitely check that out. So cute. I really like her idea of the Tinker guinea pig. I really like the Tinker dog and the Tinker cat and all those Mm. items that come with it. So I think a Tinker guinea pig would be pretty cool. Great idea. Love it. Well, that's it for our Kins Post this week. Be sure to send us your letters and comments because they might be read on the show. In this segment... We interview a GAN staff member and ask them about their job. This week's special guest is none other than Matt Webkin's friends. Hey, everybody. Hi, Matt. Hey, Hey, how's it going? Now, I want to mention something right off the top. As you know, our episode is about best friends, and we said last episode that this episode's guest has a special best friend story to tell. Matt, do you want to elaborate on that? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Janelle is really excited to have me here today. I am. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so a lot of people don't know this, but me and Mike are actually twins. Wow. Yep. Twist of events. I've known him almost all my life. Wow. Almost all your (laughs) life. I was born first. Yeah, that's true. Oh, he's got the slight edge there. He Mm -hmm. does. Yeah, I do. And uh, since our voices sound kind of similar, Matt will be doing this interview in a really high-pitched voice. (laughs) 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 All right. So uh, what's your job here, Matt? And what's a typical day like for you? Um, so I'm a game designer, and it depends what project I'm working on. So a lot of people know me from Webkin's Friends, 
And for that, I will typically work on adding the content to the game. So that's the new goals, the new items. And I work with the producers in figuring out what's going to come out the next release. I also work on the arcade games. I recently uh, worked on Goober's Atomic Adventure as a level designer. Nice. That was a really fun project. So if you have troubles with one of the levels of Goober's Atomic <laughs> Adventure, you know who to go to to uh, make a suggestion. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For sure. Um, yeah, and we'll be working on more arcade games, so look out for that. That's exciting. Nice. Mm-hmm. Wow, cool. Um, my question is, what's your favorite part of working at a game studio like Gantz? Yeah, my favorite part is probably working on new ideas. I love like sitting around with other people, like you guys, Yay. <laughs> Yay. and uh, just coming with cool ideas. Yeah, we're definitely always talking about new ideas, new features, new yeah. ways of playing games and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and we all play games at home like yeah. for fun, so yeah. it's great getting ideas from there, too. Definitely. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to design games when they're grown up, what should they practice doing? They should definitely play games. Mm-hmm. It's not the only thing you should be doing, but it's a good way to get inspiration, you know, put a, t- together your favorite ideas to make your own sort right. of game. Definitely, though, you should learn. You don't need to learn the coding and the development side of it, but it's definitely good to have some sort of knowledge because right. you, lo- you work so closely with the people who actually put the game together. So you got to understand that sort of language. Cool. Absolutely. So for my final question, do you have a story about best friends? Yeah, uh, this is actually a pretty funny story. When me and Mike were babies or kids, toddlers, um, our parents used to tell us that uh, when they would sneak into our room at night, they would find us talking to each other in our what? own language. What? Yeah, they would. They said they we, we would say things to each other and start laughing together as if we just made a joke, but we weren't speaking anything because we were, we were babies and making up gibberish. Just some crazy language, but I don't know what we were doing. But it's cool because we would look back on our, our home videos and you would see us talking and communicating in, in, this, in nothing, just <laughs> random <laughs> words. And then we would start laughing and... Sometimes, so. sometimes we still do that again, right, Michael? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> You'll just find us just babbling away in the car. laughing to each other. And no one understands what's going on. What are these guys doing? That's incredible. Well, that's an incredible bond that you two have. It's a, it's a, it must be a twin thing. Definitely yeah, a twin thing, and now you work at the same company, which yeah. is really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's convenient. I can't get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Matt, thank you so much for coming oh, on the cool. show and telling us about your job. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Now for the inside scoop on Valentine's Day. It's not for a few more weeks, but we thought we'd tell a bit more about what's coming up. Between February 1st and 14th, look for the floating heart in Webkin's world and click on it once a day to win a delicious prize. From February 7th to the 14th, go visit Cinnamon the Hamster in the Kinsville Park to collect chocolates. Collect all six and you'll win a stunning grand prize. Keep watching webkinsnews.com to learn what it is. Also, remember that for one of these chocolates, you have to find it on Webkin's News. Also, set a reminder to log in to Webkin's World on Valentine's Day, February 14th, to get your special Valentine's Day gift. This one will remain a surprise for right now, though. We'll see you in Webkin's World. Make way for the return of our Spotlight segment. Our Spotlight this week is on Floaty Clickies. They might sound self-explanatory, but if you've never done a Floaty Clicky event, it might seem a bit strange. Whether it's on Webkin's World or Webkin's News, all you do during a Floaty Clicky event is try and click floating images across the screen. Once you do, you'll win a prize that gets delivered right to your webkins.com account. Floaty clickies last for a different length of time, float at different rates, and award items at different quantities per day. It all depends on the GAN's creative team's decision. For example, in the Winterfest one, you can win five prizes each day during the weekday and eight on the weekends. How easily do you find a floating item will make that item more rare or less rare? Floaty clickies have different chances of appearing, and it does require a bit of luck. Over a certain amount of time, there's a possibility that it will show up. If it doesn't, these chances are slightly increased for the next time it tries to appear. Again, these are all dependent on how rare the floaty clicky should be. Our advice if you're not seeing many floaty clickies? Keep trying. It's just all about luck. Have fun with the next floaty clicky events. I think after this episode, I really want to call my best friend and catch up, don't you? Yeah, I'm just going to go downstairs and talk to Matt. (laughs) (laughs) Before we go, let's talk about the next episode. That's right. Our next episode's theme is all about... Shopping! Yes, my favorite thing. You're so excited. (laughs) It, it is super fun, Shopping especially in Webkin's fun. world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we are going to talk W Shop, E Store, selling items and trading items, anything to do with Webkin's and the fun of shopping for yourself and your pets. Is there anything you want to know about shopping in Webkin's world? Any tips you might have for your fellow Webkin's members? What's the rarest item you were ever able to find at the Curio Shop? What's your favorite type of item to shop for and collect? We'll talk about all of these and also interview not one, but two GANS employees who know a thing or two about shopping in Webkin's world. You could call them experts, actually. Two for the price of one, eh, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's pretty good. Good pun? Yeah, okay. it's a good one. Great. Well, awesome. We will see you guys next time. See you.